we've been discussing the future of special operations. We just had a very lively discussion about it, and we focused on whether now is the time to change the architecture um, guiding the, the employment of SOF uh, in, the, in the regional combatant commands. Does the current architecture and how we employ SOF, is it sufficient for us to effectively um, use it for uh, indirect operations in the future? Um, is in your opinion right now, is it now time to change that? You know, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's time to change it or not, but I sure would want to be listening to those who think it is time to change. If I was still chairman, and I'd want to know, uh, you know, what, what's broken, what are we trying to fix? Um, the special ops community has been fabulous for the last 10 plus years in, in defending this nation and taking the fight to our enemies. Uh, and anything that we can do that makes their jobs uh, a little more efficient, hopefully a little less, a little less uh, painful on them, uh, we should certainly take a look at it. Two major missions for special ops, uh, indirect and indirect. Uh, the indirect mission, in my mind, is the one that is long-term the most effective. It's the one where they you know, visit country, go back and go back and go back, and become experts in, in that country, get to be known in that country, get to, to understand the culture in, in a way that, that uh, very few others possibly can. So those are long-term missions, and I think that the, the current system for Asking for those kinds of forces and allocating them to the combatant commanders uh, works very well. On the other hand, the direct mission is the one that, in my mind, is uh, most uh, time sensitive. As a U.S. citizen, I would not want one U.S. officer um, able to move any, any plane, any ship, any troop anywhere on the planet. So I have that, that bias going into this discussion when I think, start thinking about the special operations community. And I also have another bias, which is about speed. And, and from, for the most part, almost always, speed is a force multiplier. But we've got to be careful uh, that we don't allow ourselves as a nation to be able to move our special operators, in, in this case, so quickly that we can employ them before we think about alternatives. But having said that, uh, to the extent that the, as I understand, a um, thing that might happen would be for the Special Operations Commander to be able to, like a combatant commander can right now, a, a geographic uh, combatant commander can right now, propose the movement of forces. I, I think that makes, makes good sense because we have that individual tasked with global responsibilities. He's seeing things that in one AOR that are impacting other AORs. He's seeing things develop. And if he sees something before anybody else that may require deployment of forces, uh, I think it's fine for him to come forward and say, I think we should move this unit from, from, from here to there. My only caveat on that is, is that I would want, if it's going to cross geographic combatant commander's boundaries, I would want that request for forces to be approved either by the Secretary of Defense or the President, just like I feel about the chairman in that we don't want to have a military officer um, with the capability to be able to move, move things all over the planet without without some kind of a civilian uh, oversight. Well, General Pace, again, thank you for participating in this year's Global Security Forum. It's, uh, it's an honor and it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, Ozzy. Thanks.